Perfect. Perfect. We couldn't have planned this better. You guys look like... Dorks. <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You're closed, motherfucker. On October 14th, 1994, Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction hit theaters in the US, introducing a bold new filmmaker to Hollywood. The movie didn't just teach Americans that a quarter pounder with cheese is called a royale with cheese in France. What do you make all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped... Oh, what the fuck's happening? Oh, man. Shit, man. Oh. It also brought John Travolta back into the spotlight, earning him an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. Here are the top 10 weird but true facts. Be sure to stick around to the end for a bonus fact. With great vengeance and furious anger, those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother. Number one, every time Vincent Vega heads to the bathroom, a frequent occurrence, as heroin use often causes constipation, disaster strikes. At Mia Wallace's house, he returns to find her overdosing. At the restaurant, he walks out to a robbery in progress. I'm gonna sit across from her, chew my food, my mouth closed, laugh at her fucking jokes, and that's it. Finally, while using the bathroom at Butch's apartment, he meets his end, being shot dead upon his return. Number two, when the Buddy Holly waiter, played by Steve Buscemi, asks Mia if she wants her $5 shake. A $5 shake. Hey, with that shake, Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy? Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy. He's using a playful metaphor to ask if she prefers vanilla or chocolate. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis were white entertainers, while Amos and Andy were black comedians, cleverly hinting at the shake flavors. Number three, after the film's iconic dance scene, Vincent Vega and Mia Wallace are seen returning to her house holding a trophy. In this handsome trophy that Marilyn here... While the audience is led to believe they won the dance contest, a subtle advertisement later reveals that the trophy was stolen. This implies that Vincent and Mia didn't win the competition, but they took the trophy anyway. Number four, Butch was initially envisioned as a young up-and-coming boxer, with actors like Sylvester Stallone, Matt Dillon, and Mickey Rourke considered for the role. However, Tarantino later reworked the character and offered it to Bruce Willis, who had originally expressed interest in playing Vincent Vega. If you're enjoying this content, please support the channel by hitting the like button. Thanks. Now back to the countdown. I want you to go in that bag and find my wallet. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. Number five, to prepare for his role as Vincent Vega, John Travolta consulted a recovering heroin addict, a friend of Quentin Tarantino for insights. When Bonnie goes shopping, she buys shit. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. The addict suggested that Travolta mimic the sensation of heroin by drinking tequila and soaking in a hot tub, as it would replicate the drug's effects without using it. Taking the advice, Travolta set up tequila shots along the edge of the hotel hot tub and experimented with the method alongside his wife. Number six, the character Trudy, played by Bronagh Gallagher, is seen wearing a t-shirt of the Irish rock band, The Frames. This was a nod to her connection with the band's lead singer, Glenn Hansard, as they had appeared together in The Commitments. Gallagher had promised to wear the t-shirt in Pulp Fiction if she landed the role, and she kept her word. Number seven, when Butch escapes in a cab after killing his boxing opponent, the taxi driver, played by Angela Jones, is actually reprising a character she portrayed in a TV pilot. In that role, she worked as a crime scene cleaner with a deep fascination for death. This backstory explains her curiosity as she asks Butch what it feels like to kill someone. Number eight, the role of Vincent Vega was initially written for Michael Madsen, who had portrayed Vic Vega in Reservoir Dogs. However, Madsen turned down the role in favor of a starring role in Wyatt Earp. Tarantino then made the unexpected and controversial decision to cast John Travolta, an actor primarily known for his roles in Grease and Saturday Night Fever. Despite being paid less than $150,000 for the part, Travolta's performance earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Number nine, as Butch drives away from his apartment, he listens to flowers on the wall by the Statler brothers, singing along to the line, smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. 
Interestingly, in Die Hard with a Vengeance, Samuel L. Jackson's character asks Bruce Willis's John McClane what he's been up to. McClane's cheeky reply, oh, just smoking cigarettes, watching Captain Kangaroo. He's working on a nice fat suspension, smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. Come on. Number 10. Jules was initially envisioned with a massive afro, but a crew member accidentally bought a Jerry Curl wig instead. Fortunately, both Samuel L. Jackson and Quentin Tarantino loved the look, and it ultimately became a defining feature of the character. Now for a bonus fact. Now, I'm right now I'm a fucking race car, right? And you got me in a red. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying that it's fucking dangerous to have a race car in a fucking red, that's all. The mystery of what's inside Markellis Wallace's briefcase has sparked endless debate. The most popular theory claims the briefcase holds Martellus Wallace's soul, explaining the golden glow, the band-aid on the back of his head, where the soul was supposedly removed, and the combination 666. In reality, the band-aid covered a shaving scar on actor Ving Rames's head, and Quentin Tarantino's original script had the briefcase containing diamonds. No, man, you know, fuck, I mean, I want to help you, but I don't want to lose my wife doing it, all right? However, Tarantino abandoned the idea. Instead, he deliberately left the contents undefined, encouraging audiences to speculate and craft their own theories. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like and subscribe button and check out more interesting videos on this channel. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes.